Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Valentine's Day is right around the corner and it is considered to be one of the most romantic days of the year. But sometimes things don't always turn out the way we planned. So today I'm gonna to be sharing some Valentine's Day horror stories with you. And if that sounds like fun, stick around because I'm about to get into it. But before I do, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe because it really does help me out a lot and it is always greatly appreciated. And with that being said, let's get into today's video. All right, first story. The first Valentine's Day I spent with my now boyfriend was awful. It was actually our first real date, so we were just getting to know each other. And we went to a nice dinner and sat way too close to another couple in the restaurant. The clearly wasted wife next to us kept butting into our conversation, telling us that we were acting awkwardly together, and probably that we wouldn't last, and my major was just an MRS degree, and she gave this long rant about how she and her husband weren't having sex anymore. I was cringing the whole time, and the husband was profusely apologizing. We basically stopped speaking after we realized that we couldn't say anything to each other without her overhearing and making some comment. It was hands down the worst date ever. But the man I was with eventually became my boyfriend, and five years later, we laugh about it. I couldn't... <laughs> I mean, seriously, being in a situation like that where you're having your first date with someone and there is a person who's completely just sloshed next to you, just butting in. I think for me, if I'd been in that scenario, I probably would have asked to move tables if that was even a possibility. I would have made the effort to do that because I don't know if I would have been able to, yeah, I probably would have gotten quiet too. I don't know if I would have kept talking if we weren't able to move, but I would have tried to have moved because that... That would just suck. I mean, they're laughing about it now, which is great, but okay, it's like, thanks lady, appreciate it. Awesome, thanks for helping out our Valentine's Day. <laughs> All right, next story. I was sitting in history class on Valentine's Day when I got a weird text from a number I didn't recognize asking me to be their Valentine. I had no clue who it was, so I asked. He said that we met before, but he didn't give me any more details. And after hours of texting back and forth, I was dying to know who my secret admirer was. So I agreed to meet up with him for a blind date at a coffee shop, but I took a ton of safety precautions, including telling all of my friends where I was going and letting the barista know that I was on a blind date. I got to the coffee shop and I was so excited and time ticked by and a half an hour later, I realized that I'd been stood up on Valentine's Day. I didn't even know by whom. The next day, the same anonymous number teased me about getting stood up. The whole experience was such a bummer. That just freaking sucks. I, I couldn't imagine, honestly, <laughs> that pisses me off. Think about who that individual was who would go to all that trouble, obviously knew this person to text them, have them show up at a restaurant and wait there just to stand them up and to make fun of them the following day. I mean, forget Valentine's Day. Anytime something like that happened, I mean, that really sucks. I hope karma came back and bit that guy in the ass because he certainly deserves it. All right. Next story. I was in a long distance relationship that was going downhill and I needed it to end like yesterday. We'd been together for more than two years and I felt like I owed him the respect of having the difficult breakup conversation in person. The problem, once I realized that it was time to break up, the first available weekend for us to visit happened to be on Valentine's Day. He ended up taking me out for a disastrous dinner on B-Day. It was so bad that the waitress came over and actually asked if I was okay. I wound up breaking up with him the next day on the actual holiday, but my train wasn't until the next day, so I had to stay at his place overnight after dumping him. Oh my God, <laughs> what a terrible situation to put yourself in. Honestly, if it were me, I would have waited until the next day till I was getting ready to leave. You know, get up a little earlier with your soon to be ex, <laughs> letting him know your feelings, and then, you know, give him a hug and, and part ways. Cause having to stay the entire night, I mean, what do you do? Get a hotel? She stayed. I, I wouldn't have been able to do that. It's good to have the, you know, conversation in person instead of just sending a text. You know, it's at least she tried. Right? Next story. I've been seeing this guy for about two months and we hadn't had the talk on whether we were going to be an official couple or not. So he asked me if I wanted to go out on Valentine's Day, though he just said Friday. And I was like, yeah, great assuming that he knew it was Valentine's Day. I got a blowout, got all dressed up, and there I waited at the sushi place for 45 minutes. I could just feel everyone giving me sad eyes for being stood up. So finally, he got there. 
no good excuse for being late and no flowers so I busted his balls about it and he totally panicked because he had no idea it was Valentine's Day. He wound up giving me the I'm not in a good place to commit to anybody right now speech blah 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 right then and there. Okay that sucks but you know honestly if you think about it this guy probably did you a favor it was obvious that he wasn't like super into you to begin with so you know maybe just be grateful that you found out sooner rather than later, even though it was on Valentine's Day. It sucks and it is embarrassing. I mean, that would be the bright side, at least the only one I can think of. Next story. My ex-boyfriend invited me over to his house to spend Valentine's Day with him, and I was really excited. I had even bought him a really nice gift, pens, notebook, because he was really into drawing. I drove about 30 minutes from my place to get there, and we were just hanging out in his room. He was acting really weird and I asked him what was wrong and he proceeded to break up with me right then and there after I had given him his present. That's a dick move. Have her drive all the way over there 30 minutes just to break up with her. Why bother? You know, certain things like that, I really just don't understand. But again, did her a favor, let her know who he was right up front, didn't waste any more of her time, now she's free to find someone better. Next story. This guy had asked me out a few times, but I'd said no every time. But I decided to give him a shot on Valentine's Day. I got in the car and we drove to a quick check, a uh, picture of 7-Eleven Subway combined. He paid for his sandwich and then he dropped me off at my dorm. The whole excursion was about 15 minutes. I had no problem saying no to him the next time. <laughs> that was freaking funny. And honey, I don't blame you, because uh, yeah, I would say no too. Maybe that was his idea of a good date. I don't know, who knows? Maybe he was nervous. I mean, anything could be possible, but I would say no too the next time, to be honest. Yeah, that's that's just not anything I, wanna, I would want to waste my time with. Not to be mean, it's just, that's just not, not for me. <laughs> and clearly not for her too, so I, I'm not alone in that. So anyway, <laughs> next story. This man on a mission. Okay. We were having dinner at a restaurant and suddenly he jumped up and ran to the bathroom. About 45 minutes later, I got worried and I went to check on him. As it turned out, the guy who went into the restroom before him was his dealer and they were in there getting high. This was not only Valentine's Day, it was our first date. Okay, if anyone were doing you a solid, letting you know right up front who they were, it's this guy. I would be out of there so fast. I seriously would grab my things, I, I'd be gone. I would never talk to that person again. That is just unbelievable. There's no excuse for that kind of thing. Just, I, I couldn't even wrap my head around that scenario. My heart goes out to this lady. What a freaking nightmare. That's probably one of the worst stories that I've heard happening you know, any day. Take Valentine's Day out of the equation. That right there is just a horror story, period. Next story, third wheeling mom. Okay. Valentine's Day 2009. It was a day that will live in infamy when my boyfriend planned for us to go on a near, go to a nearby winery for a tour and dinner, which sounds really nice. Uh, but he invited his mother to make matters worse. His mother called to tell us that she was running late and demanded to put me on the phone. I managed a weak hello and then she screeched, I'll be there when I get there, go by mistake and give him some, and both of you shut up. I was horrified. Worst Valentine's Day ever. Okay, first off, shame on that mom. What terrible behavior. I mean, to kids, I can't even imagine ever dealing with a parent like that. That is just shocking. I'm, I mean, I'm sure there are parents out there that have said and done. Could you imagine though? I mean, where, where is that? How does that... I can't even find the words, seriously. To be in a situation like that where someone's mom would be yelling something like that over the phone to me, I would never want to speak to her or the son or any of them again. I would be out of there. I, I would just cut ties with that whole relationship right away because it's, could you, dealing with that person over time, the more you're dating this, her son, <laughs> this, her son, the longer you're gonna be dealing with the mom. So for me, that would have been the deal breaker. I would have been done. Valentine's Day ruined 100%. Next story. One time in middle school, my biggest crush asked me to be his girlfriend. After that, I started sending him cute glitter texts saying how much I loved him and I missed him. And a few days later, right before Valentine's Day, he told his best friend to tell me that he was pulling a prank on me because he wanted to see what would happen. Life sucked. That really does suck. And honestly, I can remember a time where 
when I was in middle school, I had a really big crush on someone for a while. And, oh gosh, I liked him so much. And he did not like me back. And my sister, my older sister, you know, she's just friends with the whole group and all that, and his older brother and whatnot, convinced him to have his little brother ask me out. And I was on cloud nine. I'm this little girl. I'm so freaking happy. And then the next day, his best friend came over, knocked on the door and said, so-and-so wants to break up with you. He doesn't really like you. And I was crushed. <laughs> I was crushed. It was terrible. So I can kind of relate to that story. It really does suck. And I feel bad for you, honey. That That's a shame. But you know, I'm sure many, many years later, you've uh, met people that you've liked and hopefully you're in a happy wonderful relationship now so you know life goes on we live we learn that's all there is to that all right last one for the day and that is last minute change okay and it says i've been dating my boyfriend for almost a year and his mom hated me because he was her little boy okay on the way to the restaurant my boyfriend decided to turn around so that he could take his freaking parents with us Things were never the same after our surprise double date. And I could imagine that they wouldn't be the same. That is awful. Uh, I, I, I'm so sorry for that young lady to be in a situation like that. If you're in a kind of relationship where a family member, either on the boyfriend side or the girlfriend side or whatever the case may be, and they don't like you, it's gonna cause problems. And it could easily end a relationship, which is probably what happened here. Yeah, my heart goes out to this girl. That's, that's horrible. And what a terrible way to spend Valentine's Day. You know, looking across the table at someone who just absolutely despises you. I'm gonna say pass, hard pass. You know, I'm not gonna go for that one. Does not sound like fun. Would rather stay home. So those are some Valentine's Day moments that are really freaking terrible. And my heart goes out to everyone who went through these experiences, you know? Things don't always work out the way we plan. And sometimes, you know, people will do you a favor by letting you know just who they are up front. And sometimes it happens on a holiday. So <laughs> anyway, guys, that's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for sticking around and watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will catch y'all in the next one. <laughs> Bye.